Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody this afternoon, this Friday afternoon, and thank you for being here. Uh, let me back up a little bit. My slides seem to be advancing on their own. There we go. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the application of some of the information that we have and, and what it has meant in the formulation of uh, dairy cattle rations. Uh, just to reiterate a few things that Dr. Knowlton had mentioned, I think there's two big concerns that we continue to have, and one is on reproductive efficiency, and the other one is on the effect of phosphorus in the, uh, in the environment. Uh, if we look at, at really all the research that's been done recently, um, it really has failed to show a relationship between dietary phosphorus and reproductive performance of dairy cattle. Uh, there's a good bit of, of concern amongst that, among some in the, in the uh, uh, profession, that uh, low phosphorus rations lead to, to poor reproduction. And as we can see with a, a chart here from a, a summary of 13 trials from Satter and Wu from University of Minnesota, um, there's really no influence on days to first estrus, days to first AI, or days open that we see in, uh, uh, in, these, in, in these studies. The second concern is, is the impact on environment. And I think this is interesting to look at in that this is some data on phosphorus loads to the Chesapeake Bay, which is our environmental barometer here on the east. And this is in millions of pounds uh, per year and looking at different sources of phosphorus coming into the bay, estimates of different sources. And we can see, really see some great progress from 1985 until 2012 from about 25 million pounds of phosphorus entering the bay to uh, less than 18 uh, million pounds. I would note that a lot of that progress has come from some sources other than uh, agriculture. So agriculture continues to be, a, uh, I think, a big challenge in terms of, of nutrient management. The real, one of the challenges that we have with, um, uh, with our, um, I think, phosphorus has been the prevalence of economically priced byproduct ingredients, and we've really seen quite a bit of explosion, particularly with the ethanol business. We're seeing quite a bit more um, uh, dried distiller's grains, which are high in phosphorus, and products in which we've removed the starch and really concentrated some of the other nutrients uh, in these sources. So fat tends to be a little bit higher. Um, protein tends to be higher in many of these byproduct ingredients and, and, of course, also phosphorus. So if we look at phosphorus nutrition of dairy cattle and, and the most recent NRC in 2001, uh, it makes some assumptions of phosphorus availability and really the, the avail availability of, of 0.64 was listed for some of the forages and almost everything else was assigned a de default value of about 0.7. And again, making the assumption, uh, as, as Mark had mentioned, that phytase phosphorus is relatively digestible by ruminants. Um, taking the data that Mark had uh, just really had on his last slide, we can look at a comparison of what the work from our lab has shown to the available nitrogen that's used in the, in the most recent NRC model. Uh, some of the real distinctive things, I think, to notice is that the availability of phosphorus is, is quite a bit higher uh, for the forages. Um, and if we look at some other feeds, uh, really not too much change. Uh, high moisture corn has gone up. Distillers is, is a little bit higher, but our availabilities are lower for some of these byproduct feeds and concentrate feeds such as hominy, soybean meal, and, uh, and actually corn grain, the availability is slightly lower. So what, we, what I did was to look at the potential, uh, the impact of phosphorus bioavailability bio on dairy rations. And I used a 52-month-old Holstein cow weighing about <clears throat> 1,500 pounds or 682 kilos. She was producing about 85 pounds of milk with 3.5% fat and 3% protein, and she was about 100 days in milk, so a relatively high-producing cow. And I used the feed analyses that were present in the NRC values, and that included the, the nutrient levels as well as the bioavailability that's included in those diets. Uh, so I had two different scenarios to try and look at this rather simply. One was a standard diet 
with what I would say would be minimal amounts of byproduct feeds. The second diet we'll call a byproduct diet <clears throat> in where I reduced the corn and soybean meal and replaced it with corn gluten feed, distiller's grains, hominy feed, and wet brewer's grains. I tried to optimize the use of those ingredients. So here's my standard diet. I'm not going to talk about every ingredient in there, but we had some alfalfa forage, and this is in pounds of dry matter per day. Uh, so it was predominantly alfalfa silage and corn silage, corn grain, soybean meal. I had some blood meal in there to provide some uh, rumen undegradable protein. We had some cottonseed and hydrolyzed tallow as a, as a fat source. And one of the reasons for including that is because a lot of these byproduct feeds were also rather high in fat and wanted to make my fat levels relatively similar. And then we had the mineral supplements. And notice uh, these rations do not include any uh, inorganic sources of phosphorus, so I had no dical in there. Um, so that's my standard diet. That diet uh, was <coughs> balanced at 51 pounds of dry matter. Uh, the NRC model said that intake capabilities were 55.1 kilos or pounds, excuse me. So um, we're, we're balanced it well within their ability to uh, to consume that diet. Using the NRC model, <clears throat> we predicted there was sufficient energy for 86 and a half pounds of milk and enough metabolizable protein for 83.1 uh, pounds of milk uh, for those cows. The phosphorus requirement is 0 .13, 0 .131 pounds, or about 60 grams of phosphorus. I noticed Mark had about 80, so his cows are a little bit higher in terms of, of production. Um, total absorbable phosphorus was 0 .128, or about 58 grams uh, in those diets. So we were just about in balance. We had a deficiency of about 1.4 grams a day. And I think looking at Mark's, uh, slides, we'd all agree that, that with our knowledge and with the, the flux of the pools, that, that that was essentially in balance. This diet was uh, slightly deficient in RUP and rumen undegradable protein. Had about 16.7% protein, about 33, almost 34% NDF, and 28% uh, forage NDF. Um, and we can see the calcium and phosphorus. Uh, levels in that diet, and it's about 5% fat. So if we compare this now to a byproduct diet, forage levels were very similar, but remember I pulled out quite a bit of the corn grain, so now I'm down to 2.6 pounds of corn grain dry matter, uh, about 1.8 pounds of soybean meal. I've kept the, kept the blood meal in there, but now I have hominy feed, uh, which is somewhat similar to corn with higher fat. Uh, some wet brewer's grains, distiller's grains, and corn gluten feed to replace that protein and energy that was coming from corn and soy. And then again, the minerals uh, necessary to, uh, to supplement those feeds. Um, this diet was also balanced at 51 pounds of dry matter, uh, a little bit higher energy allowable milk, and a little bit higher MP allowable milk in this, in this study. And I think I think these differences here are somewhat meaningful as we come back and look at, at the differences in these diets. Um, again, the same requirements, but now we've got almost 76 grams of absorbable phosphorus and a positive balance of almost 20 grams of, of phosphorus per cow per day. Um, we, are, we are now on a positive on RUP and a positive of RDP balance. Uh, we're at 18% crude protein, so almost three-quarters of a pound more protein in that diet. The energy is about the same. We have more NDF, but it's coming from non-forage sources. Remember, this was 27, and now we're at 21 because a lot of these byproduct feeds are higher in, uh, uh, in NDF. And, uh, and we also have higher levels of phosphorus in this, in this diet. So to sum things up, a standard diet with NRC availability values, a standard diet with the values that we have calculated, we see a deficiency of about 5 grams, and here a deficiency of about 1.4 grams. Applying this to byproduct diets, we go from about 16 to 20, and I think that, uh, again, looking at some of the work from 
Dr. Hannigan and Knowlton's labs, uh, that's rather small, uh, rather small differences that we're seeing there. Now, there are some additional considerations for phosphorus balance and dairy rations, and, and what this slide uh, is here represents is some standard ingredients in, in dairy cattle diets. These are the phosphorus values that appear in NRC, and these are the phosphorus values that we see from a, a, a five-year Virginia Tech study where we tracked eight herds and sampled um, ingredients on the farm on almost a monthly basis. And uh, these are the phosphorus measures that we see there, and we can see some deviations from NRC. Uh, the Mid-Atlantic States comes from the Cumberland, Cumberland Valley Analytical Services from the last uh, year from August to August of 2012 to 2013. So you do see some, some variation in phosphorus levels uh, in addition to uh, which are a concern in addition to that availability. Looking at this graphically, um, this shows the, the variation in corn silage phosphorus levels from as low as 0.2 to as high as 0.3, so really not a tremendous variation in phosphorus in, in corn silage. Um, for corn gluten feed, again, uh, quite a bit higher avail or, uh, levels of phosphorus that we see in those diets, and, uh, and the same is true probably even more so with dried distiller's grains from a low of 0.7 to a high of almost 1.1% but most of them right around the 1% level. So again, just to kind of summarize, um, applying the new bioavailability values, we see uh, a slight difference of about four grams in a heavy uh, byproduct diet and, uh, and, and just a few grams in the, uh, in the standard diet. So looking at, I guess, the take-home message for this is is phosphorus availability from forages is, is, uh, b appears higher than NRC, and so I think that is a significant change. The phosphorus availability is lower in some of the byproduct feeds, and of course it tends to be higher in fermented feeds such as we saw with the high moisture corn. Uh, given the new information on availability, you know, what's the impact on rations and nutrient balance? I think we, from an animal perspective, we want to make sure that we're meeting their requirements and I think that diets with a low inclusion rate of byproduct feeds appear to have adequate phosphorus without necessarily uh, supplementing inorganic phosphorus. Uh, rations with higher inclusion rates of byproducts are really going to have mod modest surpluses of, of dietary phosphorus. Um, nutrient analysis, I think from large-scale testing labs, so some substantial variation. So it's important that that be included in the analysis. And I think really looking at it practically, and, and again, Dr. Hannigan mentioned this, I think in cases of, of high-producing early lactation cows, there conceivably may be, may be uh, necessary for some inorganic phosphorus supplementation. But realizing that there's a very large pool uh, in the bone, I think, to, to uh, uh, meet some of those needs in those, in those animals. And I think something else that we must look at but is probably uncommon is that uh, level of phosphorus in, in many of the forages tends to mirror what the phosphorus status of soils are. Uh, in much of the U.S., uh, we don't have low phosphorus soil, so I think it's going to be a rather rare situation when our forages are going to be lower in, in phosphorus. Um, on the basis of this uh, five-year study that we did, we looked at the impact of, of uh, feed management, improved feed management on uh, phosphorus, whole farm nutrient balance for phosphorus and also whole farm nutrient balance for nitrogen. We did some simulations and found out that, that trying to achieve lower phosphorus rations by avoiding byproducts really adds some additional expense to, to dairy rations. Uh, that work was published, uh, I believe, in 2012 in the Professional Animal Scientist. Um, the other thing we found in that study is that rations with higher inclusion rates of byproduct feeds were higher in crude protein, and which has implications on, on balance, uh, whole farm nutrient balance for nitrogen. Uh, our example with similar dry matter and energy balance, there was uh, three quarters of a pound more protein per cow per day, um, and, and I think that's, 
that's something that that is um, that we're going to experience with the use of these high bribe product feeds. I will say on our dairies, um, on the part of the feed management trial that we did, uh, we were able to see some improvements in whole farm nutrient balance through improved feed management. Unfortunately, um, and it varied from year to year depending on feed prices, uh, we were unable to see any long-term impact of improved phosphorus, uh, improved feed management on whole farm nutrient balance for phosphorus. And I think a great deal of that mean was because we were feeding surplus amounts of phosphorus with really not too much uh, supplementation. Um, I would like to acknowledge um, in this long-term trial that was done, uh, two graduate students that were um, very much essential and, and uh, carried out a good bit of that study, and one was Beverly Cox, uh, master's graduate student from Virginia Tech, and the other one was, uh, was Brittany Stewart. And uh, I think this, this study did an excellent job of documenting the impact of feed management on uh, improved nutrient balance for both phosphorus and nitrogen. So long term, I think uh, it's going to be very difficult to have low phosphorus diets. Uh, it's very challenging to find those ingredients that are that low. Uh, I think the, uh, the use of byproducts is a fact of life in the future. Uh, we must dispose of these feeds in some manner, and I think processing through animals and particularly through dairy cows is a, is a logical use for that. And so we're going to be dealing with some of those challenges in, uh, in surpluses of, of phosphorus on dairy farms. 